knowledge, uh, truth, if you want, and getting an understanding of what the world is about, and what we are doing in this world. Not to forget, this is the most important thing when it comes to working, living in academia. I say living in academia because it is much more than, than simply a, a mechanical job. Uh, there is this term of calling, and I guess we have it in all jobs, uh, that there must be, and that there is some way of, of calling, some understanding of um, what we do is important, is important to us and society and our environment. Um, at least this is uh, one idea that it is involved. Now, there is a certain development. Uh, I think this is an, a, a development that we, working in this area, um, personally go through, as well as society went through. Uh, in history, in the long-term history. What actually kind of follows me uh, since I did my work on my PhD thesis, uh, this is this one sentence uh, and one issue, if you want, uh, the one sentence is the development from status to contract. Uh, that we have an increasingly formalized um, understanding of what our relationships are uh, in society, that they are regulated, increasingly regulated, uh, instead of being uh, emerging from our from from the way uh, we we live together. <clears throat> um, it is something where we have this formalized way, where we have laws. And actually, this sentence comes from Maine, uh, looking at ancient law and the development from there uh, to modern law. Um, and we still have something where we can say, yes, it is formalized, it is entirely bureaucratized, as Max Weber comes up with later. Um, but still, it doesn't work this way. There are still other elements. Uh, it is not just this bureaucracy as a neutral uh, formal body that governs us. Uh, Rudolf Jering, uh, von von Jering, uh, talked about this in a different way, and saying the the one thing is uh, we are talking about law. Okay, uh, he, he was coming from from the side from law as well. Uh, but we are talking as well about the, the aim. What, what is the aim behind uh, law? And then he was writing in his famous little uh, work, actually it was a speech originally um, a presentation, and there he was uh, writing about the, strug the struggle for law. The struggle for law and the struggle within law, within this little, uh, <coughs> legal science, um, where it is very important that even if the form, uh, if the law is formalized, it's a formalized body, uh, it is permanently in moving. And this is his, his main thesis. It is in, in a permanent move uh, that even and as it is formalized, uh, it is as well um, disputed. <coughs> There's this famous phrase, uh, you are not right, but uh, somebody uh, gives you or, or uh, attributes right to you. Um, so there is another thing, and I'm basically talking about this, this long-term development uh, through which we then go as a, a person. There is this long-term development of um, Bergson coming up with uh, that he said, actually, there are three different planes of uh, history, of development. This was Bergson, this was later Baudet, um, building up a school on this, and then moving on uh, to, to economics. 
as looking at, at what does it actually mean uh, that, that we have uh, different levels of, of development. Uh, we can say it is a different level of concretization. This is something we are struggling with working in this area, working in, in social science, uh, but as well in, in others. Uh, we, we have this general approach, understanding what is the human body like, what is society like, uh, what, what our personality is about. Um, and, and, and so it's the, the long way uh, he has in mind saying that there is a very general long-term development um, that influences even uh, our, our life today. But this is not it, but there is as well something that is uh, the intermediate level of history, uh, where we have some uh, large-scale events, large-scale developments that influence a certain, we would say, era uh, of our existence. Uh, they cannot really be influenced. They are, of course, influenced by us. They cannot be influenced really in terms of uh, our immediate action being relevant here. And then we have a third layer, a third plane, uh, that is the, the immediate um, action, the immediate events. Uh, he, he talks literally about events, the history of events, uh, where we have single individual events, uh, something happens, something is done, and we can even personalize and, and localize uh, what is going on there. Now what uh, this entire way of thinking of uh, Baudel and, and uh, um, Bergson does not consider is something that actually is a, a very strong point made in Marxism, in, in Marxist think, thinking, uh, or if you want to be more precise, uh, in this case, in dialectical and historical uh, materialism. So it says we are going on actually from exactly where we stand, from what we are doing, uh, but even if we make our history, make history ourselves, we make it under certain conditions that are given, uh, reification of previous history, uh, and uh, cannot freely shape uh, the history um, without or on, on the basis of simply voluntary acts. Importantly, and this is exactly the point uh, the, the others uh, don't reflect clearly on. Importantly, this is a question of contradictions, mainly of class contradictions, but as well of different kinds of contradictions uh, that are not <coughs> as uh, antagonistic as this class antagonism. Uh, it's contradictions in time, contradictions in locations, um, something we have to consider, and that is decisively actually uh, determining our, our practice, what we are doing, what we can do, and where we are ready, where we are able uh, to engage in the conflicts, because any antagonism, any contradiction is always and necessarily concerned and linked to a conflict. So this is something um, that, that is very important uh, in terms of, uh, yes, we can and we do make our own history, even if we are not engaging actively, it is what we are not doing um, that is important for the future of history, uh, for how society is structured. And this is something living in, in academia we, we, and, and being trained. Uh, we, we first have to get known to these very, very general ideas uh, that, they, that, they, that, that do exist, uh, always being possible to contest what it is about. Um, do we have really an Asian 
uh, and, and a European uh, distinct pathway of human development. Uh, can we say there is a European tradition where people today say, yes, there is a European model even in social policy or in, 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 uh, so, uh, in societies, European uh, societies, limited then on, on a certain space, what, what Europe is about. And then we have this uh, European tradition going back to ancient uh, times, especially Greece um, and, and the, the ancient Greek philosophy. Um, is this so? To which extent is it so? Uh, this is then something more for the detailed study. Uh, and I'm talking now, if you want, the, the medium range. And we have exactly this uh, in terms of thinking as well. We have the historical approach, but we have then as well this uh, thinking of uh, different narratives, medium range, large range, uh, where we try to capture different things. Looking at what, what I said, maybe something of a European uh, history, the European tradition from ancient times, um, Looking then at, at what happened in the medium range, we come to details. We can look at uh, different, for instance, different member states, European member states, and look are there particular issues that are linked to these traditions, that are linked to what is then called past dependency in their own countries, and then what moves on uh, and establishes something of a very particular, sometimes peculiar, way of behaving, of taking decisions, taking decisions as a national decision or regional decision. Um, if we look at the conflicts in, in Catalonia, Spain now, if we look at um, some ideas of uh, an independent Bavaria, uh, yes, get Schäuble out. Uh, if, if we look at all what is going on in, uh, and, and what is forgotten about or over Brexit, uh, there is still the Scottish question, there is still the Irish question. The Irish actually played a huge role in this. Uh, so this is something very important that we have to go through as well in individually doing our research and this is actually a major problem, a major challenge. Why? Because we usually have what I talked about uh, the previous times. We have our own schools, we have our own thinking and try with this actually to fade out contradictions. I wouldn't say the only uh, paradigm really working with uh, uh, contradictions had been uh, Marxism, uh, but, but there is a strong orientation of not talking about contradictions. If we analyze contradictions, we always have in mind, and this was actually something Marx was uh, doing as well, we always have in mind the solution. The solution actually being the dissolution uh, of this contradiction. Because, of course, we cannot live permanently in this contradiction. But the question then is, can we allow to deny them? Are there as well contradictions that are this, this permanent tension that brings us further and that we are not supposed to overcome by dissolution them by uh, overcoming them completely by wiping them out. And there we find something in a personal life that, that we are all looking as well uh, actually for contradictions, for this tension. What, whatever we have, there's always this tension which, to be honest, I don't really understand that we enter situations and we are permanently looking for situations that are in some way unpleasant. It's the effort, the physical energy we need uh, to engage in sports. 
coming just out of the gym, uh, being able to do a little bit again, uh, I, I couldn't expect doing something again, being physically active. Um, it is something where we go to a theater play or where we go to music performances where we always have this tension between harmony and disharmony. A completely harmonious piece of music is getting boring after some time. Even if it may be that it's developing to an earworm. But I would suppose this already would mean that there is a certain tension that, that permanently carries it on. There is no end. And this is what, what this piece mean, uh, needs to, to carry on, to be carried on, to engage our ideas, our thinking, our feeling. And this is something, for whatever reason, in um, academic work, we try to forget it, at least to make it into very small pieces and fade things out where we have difficulties to, to deal with. I referred the other day to uh, Snow's work on two cultures, and this is exactly this. To build up a completely um, coherent model in any kind of natural science, and I say natural science, not, not, not science, uh, is kind of easy. We have our equations, we have our models, we have our clear um, relations between something. This is what we are do doing permanently as well in the economics. And there is this nice little phrase uh, which is in a way rather stupid, it's Ceteris Paribus. Uh, it is under unchanged, otherwise unchanged conditions. And this is of course very easy to build any model that is not depending or that is not considering um, external changes. And then we have science and we have social science. I've been in conflict uh, with a colleague, he was a mathematician, uh, it was about science shops um, providing academic uh, expertise for people who cannot afford it, where there is a social need for it. Mm. There had been issues about the science in terms of uh, quality of water, treatment quality of water or something like this, but there had been many social scientists, uh, scientific aspects, and this colleague said, uh, when I said we, we want to build up, this was back in Cork, uh, we want to build up this, this science shop. He said, but what are you talking about? You cannot claim to have a science shop if it is run by, by social, social scientists. Uh, science is up to us. Um, sorry. It's, it's a little bit silly, but, but this is a very common approach. And this is what Snow was talking about, the two cultures. People cannot even talk about, they don't have un any understanding of the other. Now, how is it possible in social science to work without thinking about the other? Isn't social science always about the other? What is the other doing? How is the other engaging? And in what is he or she engaging? Uh, and how, how are they dealing with certain conflicts? With these daily tensions. And it's about daily tensions that then emerge. And there we go, go back in history. Then, then it emerges from there uh, to the wider level. We, lose, uh, we, we uh, try to solve our own personal problems. In research with our little tiny projects, in, in writing a contribution for a journal, in writing a book, tiny little uh, concepts, uh, but 
they add ideally to another and they make history. They are able to uh, establish paradigms. Are they? This is for another time to talk about. And this links back actually to what I have been talking about the previous times. So first let's leave it there and say what we are doing as small as tiny as it is, it is something that is meaningful in the larger context. And it is even more meaningful in the larger context if we are aware of it and if we establish this connection. Well, that's it for today. And there we are again. Curiosity is key to everything. Le genre humain